Hi and welcome everyone to this Ecognition Deconstructed video. Today we're gonna have a look at Rasterize Point Cloud. This is an algorithm that will rasterize your point cloud. And first, short slide on theory and then we're gonna dive in into a project. Good, so rasterize point clouds. So how do you get a point cloud into Ecognition? Simply load it into your project. You can use drag and drop. It has to be in LAS or LAC format, but otherwise it doesn't matter where the point cloud is coming from. And to for the rasterized point cloud algorithm, you can use different point fields, such as elevation, number of returns, so every information that is stored in the point cloud can be used for rasterization. And what this algorithm does, it will add an additional raster layer to your project. All right, so here's the project. You see with a point cloud here and I'm displaying the height actually um, so red means high blue low low value you can change the mode here uh, and display different features of the point cloud if your point cloud for example is classified like this one you can display the classification if you have RGB information I think mine doesn't have RGB so it's black and white um, or intensity so you can display different modes Let's go for height again. You also can change the point size, um, right? If, you, if your point cloud is not very dense, it makes sense to increase the point size at some point just to visually see better uh, what's going on. And what else? Yes, you have this 3D subset selection cube here. If you want to have a look at the point cloud in 3D, you can use this one. Just draw a bounding box and that one's going to be displayed in 3D. Right. Close this again. Maybe just showing you a different subset. Whoop. Um, uh, maybe down here a bigger one. So it's always fun to look at the point cloud in 3D. Um, and check if everything is looking good but we want to create raster based derivatives based on the point cloud by default when you load a point cloud it's gonna do a rasterization based on the intensity that's actually this layer that you see here um, that's done by default but you can create your own rasters yourself let's for example zoom in here so this rasterization of the initial raster based on the point cloud is done based on default settings. You see a few gaps where you don't have points. That's why here in the rule set, the first section that I did here is create intensity layer. This is already an intensity layer, but we can use the rasterized point cloud algorithm uh, to improve actually this rasterization and change some settings so we close these gaps. See, we're using the algorithm rasterize point cloud. And mainly what you do here, you choose the input point cloud. In my case, it's just one point cloud, layer one. If you have a region, you can define a region. You can define class filters. So you can do a rasterization only for the class buildings, for example. Point conditions, only do a rasterization for points that have an elevation higher than two meters, something like that. And then here, that's the fun part, point field. So you can choose the point field that you wanna use to rasterize, right? Let's go for intensity. So we're gonna try to actually improve this initial layer that was generated automatically uh, on the import of the point cloud. Then you can change the operation, average, standard deviation, minimum, maximum, median mode. Let's go for average here. Kernel size, um, I'm gonna increase that afterwards so you see the difference. Uh, it's just a simplification more or less right if you increase that one it takes more points into consideration of the pixel rasterization and if you have average uh, you're gonna get a smoother outline or smoother representation of the raster if you increase the kernel size that's the output layer name that makes sense and you can define the no data pixel value uh, i set it to minus one let's execute this one and that one should look different than this one in the background because I have a kernel size of three. So let's execute this one and see if the result looks good. Ah, you see the gaps are not here anymore. 
because we have a kernel size of three by default this layer one uses a kernel size of one so we have gaps for pixels where it doesn't find a point okay so that looks good so that's the intensity can be very helpful in discriminating different features just because i mentioned this one let's increase the kernel size to a large number um, it has to be an odd positive uh, integer value okay let's increase that to 11 simply gonna override my intensity average uh, layer here and uh, that's gonna take a bit longer because it takes more points into consideration for rasterization um, but we should see a difference and let's display that one right it, it's a bit more blurry and that's just because we're using the surroundings more because we increased the kernel size I have a delete image layer so I'm simply gonna delete this one again right uh, so we have clean project again before we do the next rasterization so just keep the project clean you can create a DSM layer right using this rasterized point cloud algorithm first one is here for all points so let's see the settings we're using our point clouds we don't change anything here in the input then we use point field instead of intensity we choose C coordinate operation maximum kernel size 3 that means it takes the maximum value of a point that it's fi that it finds in this kernel and writes it to the pixel you also could use minimum that would make more sense if you look for a DTM terrain model but we're looking for surface model so I'm gonna go for maximum that's the output name no data pixel vs is minus one let's see the result here and that's an easy way to create a digital surface model based on a point cloud so if you have a point cloud you don't need additional software to create a DSM here we go it's already normalized you see the values here the ground is zero more or less and you have the bright trees that have a higher end elevation right. so DSM done um, I'm deleting this layer again let's look for the next one create DSM layer for points classified as building all right the only thing that I'm changing here is a class filter so I tell eCognition to only look at points that are classified as building and rasterize those based on the same settings uh, that I used previously C coordinate maximum three for kernel size and so on now let's do this one and we should get minus one values for all the areas all right you see it here that have not been classified as buildings and here are the bright points oh, the patches here these are the buildings I'm gonna try to overlap the point cloud classification see the red buildings here All right. and they correspond to my rasterized representation right. that's because I told the commission just to use this class for rasterization good another example here for create DSM what I do here I remove the class filter again but I set a point condition so C coordinate has to be larger or equal to 10 if this is true do a rasterization otherwise otherwise uh, define the no data pixel value execute this one and uh, that's gonna give me an additional layer let's look at this one here I only have pixels now higher than what was ah, 10 right so only points were considered that have a value higher than 10 um, that means I have minus one here so no data for areas that have a lower value in this field I'm gonna delete this one and let's have a look at another rasterization you as said before you can use diff all the point fields um, I'm gonna go here for number of returns given pulse um, number of returns can be quite a helpful additional information for classification let's give it a try aha uh -huh. good so you see higher values here in the forested areas and lower ones where it's very uh, flat homogeneous and in the heterogeneous areas you have uh, a bit more 
a uh, higher number of returns. Now, that might be helpful to discriminate uh, forest, non-forest maybe. No? Let's delete this one again. So again, same as before. Do the number of points. I use a kernel size of one because I want to use this layer as a quality layer maybe to check where I have a decent point density and where I have a lower point density. So first I calculate this raster layer and afterwards I'm gonna do a segmentation and classification. So that's the number of points, right? In the next step, I called it quality assessment, QA. I do a chessboard segmentation and then I classify my image objects based on the number of points, right? So I right away see that I've read areas with a low number of points, so that might be areas that I need to investigate more or just to take into consideration for my, uh, for my classification. Um, orange is medium and green is a uh, high, higher number of points. That's also what you can do to investigate the quality of your point cloud. I'm gonna delete all of that again and finally gonna show you that all the layers that I've calculated can be created in one step. You might have noticed that you have rasterizer one, rasterizer two. Um, so you can do in one rasterized point cloud algorithm. So in one process, you can do multiple rasterizations. I entered here all the ones or most of the ones that I've did before. Execute this one and then we should get five, five layers, I guess. Let's wait and see. Here we go to all right, four layers, sorry. And the cool thing is that you can do band combinations, right? Different band combinations that highlight features that you might be interested in. This combination, for example, nicely highlights actually forest uh, or trees and also this grassland, so the bright green, probably with some vegetation and the blue one might, might be no vegetation or sealed areas, um, right? So any combination is possible that might help you to uh, get an idea of your data sets. Ah, I actually see in this combination you nicely see the power lines as well, right? So they pop out here, the buildings are red. So just play around. You can do crazy rasterizations of all the information in your point cloud. If you have RGB information in your point cloud, you can rasterize it and create an image, RGB image uh, as well. Mm, you also can create point clouds in eCognition. You can write information from your objects into the points in eCognition. So every, there's a lot of things possible in eCognition. This one was rasterized point cloud, rasterized representation of your point cloud information. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.